Here's a nice one for us, the wrap node, which can be found under functions. Um, I didn't include this in the video on the different function nodes. I just wanted to give it a quick note of its own is why. Um, first of all, the name, I cannot figure out. A lot of people find the names of certain nodes or whatnot to be unintuitive, but once you understand what they are or you understand the system that they're used in, the names are actually very normal and intuitive. This one I don't get. So there you go, answers on a postcard for that. Basically, what the wrap node does is it allows a function to be applied to any scalar. You will remember, of course, if you've seen the functions video, that is. Um, if not, you should watch it. That the functions act like a curves adjustment when plugged into a procedural, or in some case into other functions, in that they modulate the contrast between the foreground and background color in the same way as a color correction curve. Basically, wrap lets us do the same thing, but to non-procedurals. So, I may, for instance, have an image here. I've got a lovely little picture if we Turn on the VPR there of Perseus killing the Gorgon. Very nice. Now, you'll notice, of course, that wrap only takes a scalar input. If I were to plug color into it, then all I'm going to get is the red channel. So if you were wanting to use a function on a full color image, then you would, of course, want a color split or a color scalar node in between. For the purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to use the old Luma value here. So if I plug Luma into input and input back into color there, we see absolutely no change because I have no function hooked up, of course. So I'm going to get a nice little function like sine. We plug that in and we can see that we basically have exactly what we saw in the functions video. Change the frequency to get weird effects like this and there you go. So basically the wrap will allow me to start applying functions to any kind of image. It doesn't have to be a procedural. Of course, had I split out the color parts, then I could even be adjusting each color channel separately in a different way before recombining them back into a color to plug into my texture. So we can see right there that that gives us a huge range of options for how we might want to use this node in our texturing networks. However, it doesn't stop there. Let's remember the first thing we said about wrap being able to apply a function to any input scalar. Okay, that is the key point here, scalars. Um, we will notice here that I've applied node item motion to the plane. I could have brought a null in, but quite frankly, I was a bit lazy. Let me just get the camera out of the way there, so that's not interfering with our view. Okay, so here is our plane. If I bring up the node item motion, oh look, I've got the wrap back in here. I've also got a channel info, which is the X position of the plane itself. Of course, I could just have used an item info and split that out with a split vector. But irrespective, I've taken a single vector, in this case the X axis, as a scalar. I can plump that into wrap. So let's plug the result of it into, say, the Y position. Notice I'm using the DP node motion here just for simplicity. As I drag this around on the x, look, that's the most base function, y equals x. What we want to do, of course, is adjust that, and that's where the function node comes in. So if I take this sine function and plug it in, watch what happens when I drag in x. I am only dragging in x here. Look, it starts going up and down on the y in a nice little sine curve. We see that? If I increase the frequency of my sine wave here, pump it up there, then the frequency of the up-down motions changes. So there we go. That is the wrap node, allowing you to apply functional alterations to any scalar input.